Yeah. Please fill me with the Ruach HaKodesh, that I may speak your written words with boldness to those who listen. I ask all these things in Yeshua HaMashiach's name. Amen. We'll start with the Shema. Listen and obey. Children of Yah, pay careful attention and respond. Yahweh is our power and authority. Yahweh works in unity with himself. And you shall act upon your love to Yahweh, your power and authority with your thoughts and mind, with your entire body, and with all the muchness that you have. Acts 21. After we had torn ourselves away from the Ephesian elders, we set sail and made straight run to Kos. Next day, we went to Rhodes, and from there to Patera. On finding a ship that was crossing over Phoenicia, we embarked and set sail. After sighting Cyprus, we passed it on the left, sailed to Syria, and landed in Zor, because that was where the ship was unloading its cargo. Having searched out the Talmudim there, we remained for a week, guided by the Spirit. They told Shaul not to go up to Jerusalem, but when a week was over, we left to continue our journey. All of them, with their wives and children, accompanied us until we were outside the town, kneeling on the beach and praying. We said goodbye to each other, then we boarded the ship and they returned home. When the voyage from Zor was over, we arrived in Palmias. Pal there we greeted the brothers and stayed with them overnight. The following day, we left and came to Caesarea, where we went to the home of Philip, the proclaimer of the good news, one of the seven, and stayed with him. He had four unmarried daughters with the gift of prophecy. While we were staying there, a prophet named Agab came down from Yehuda to visit us. He took Shaul's belt, tied up his own hands and feet, and said, Here is what the Ruach Kodesh says. The man who owns this belt, the Judeans in Jerusalem, will tie him up just like this and hand him over to the Gentiles. When we heard this, both we and the people there begged him not to go to Jerusalem. But Shaul answered, What are you doing, crying and trying to weaken my resolve? I am prepared not only to be tied up, but to even die in Jerusalem, for the name of the Lord Yeshua. And when, we, and when he would not be convinced, we said, May the Lord's will be done, and kept quiet. So at the end of our stay, we packed and went up to Jerusalem. And with us went some of the Talmudim from Caesarea. They brought us to the home of the man, home of the man with whom we were to stay, Mansan from Cyprus, who had been a Talmud since the early days. In Jerusalem, the brothers received us warmly. The next day, Shaul and the rest of us went to see Yaakov, and the elders were present. After greeting them, Shaul described in detail each of the things God had done among the Gentiles through his efforts. On hearing this, they praised God, but they also said to him, You see, brother, how many tens of thousands of believers there are among the Judeans, and they are all zealots for the Torah. Now, what they have been told about you, now what they have been told about you is that you are teaching all the Jews living among the Gentiles to apostatize from Moshe, telling them not to have Brit Mala for their sons and not to follow all traditions. What then is there to be done? They will certainly hear that you have come. So do what we tell so do what we tell you. We have four men who are under a vow. Take them with you. Be purified with them and pay the expenses connected with having their heads shaved. Then everyone will know that there is nothing to these rumors which they have heard about you, but that, on the contrary, you yourself stay in line and keep the Torah. However, in regard to the Gentiles who have come to trust in Yeshua, we all joined in writing them a letter with our decision that they should abstain from what had been sacrificed to idols, from blood, and from what was strangled from, and from what is strangled and from fornication. The next day, Shaul took the men, purified himself along with them, and entered the temple to give notice. And when the period of purification would be finished, and the offering would have to be made for each of them, the seven days were almost up, 
when some unbelieving Jews from the province of Asia saw him in the temple, stirred up the crowd and grabbed him. Men of Israel, help, they shouted. This is the man who goes everywhere teaching everyone things against the people, against the Torah, and against this place. Now he has brought some Gentiles into the temple and defiled this holy place. They had previously seen Trumpheus from Ephesus in the city, and with him he assumed that Shaul, Shaul had brought him into the temple. The whole city was aroused. The people came running from all over. They seized Shaul and dragged him out of the temple, and at once the gates were shut. But while they were attempting to kill him, word reached the commander of the Roman battalion that all Jerusalem was in a turmoil. Immediately, he took officers and soldiers and charged down upon them. As soon as they saw the commander, they quit beating Shaul. Then the commander came up, arrested him, and ordered him to be tied up with two chains. He asked who he was and what he had done. Everyone in the crowd shouted something different, so since he couldn't find out what happened because of the uproar, he ordered him to be brought into the barracks. When Shaul got to the steps, he actually had to be carried by the soldiers because the mob was so wild. The crowd kept following and screaming, Kill him! As Shaul was about to be brought into the barracks, he said to the commander, It is all right if I say something to you? The commander said, You know Greek? Say, aren't you that Egyptian who tried to start a revolution a while back and led 4,000 armed terrorists into the desert? Shaul said, I am a Jew from Tarshish in Sicilia, a citizen, a citizen of an important city, and I ask your permission to let me speak to the people. Having received permission, Shaul stood on the steps and motioned with his hands to the people. When they finally became still, he addressed them in Hebrew. What can we learn? How can we learn to love our Creator after reading Acts 21? We can travel as Shaul did, proclaiming the good news. Search out for Talmudim as Shaul did, so that you may encourage them and teach them and pray with them. Be guided by the Spirit as Shaul was. Kneel like Shaul did in prayer. Be like Philip and proclaim the good news. Pray for the gift of prophecy like Philip's daughters had, so that you can be used by Yeshua in proclaiming the good news. Be like Shaul, prepare to die for the name of the Lord Yeshua. Have the same mindset as Shaul. May the Lord's will be done. Aim to be a Talmudin of Messiah for life. Receive each other warmly. Tell in detail of all the things Yeshua is doing in your life. Praise God often. Keep the Torah as Shaul and his disciples did. For Gentiles, there is an option to abstain from what had been sacrificed to idols, from blood, from what is strangled, and from fornication. Find out what it means to purify yourself. How can we love others as Yeshua loves us? We can proclaim the good news to those around you. See people around you as souls that need to hear the good news. Produce spiritual fruit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. How can we bear one another's burdens? We can teach and encourage other Talmudim. End with the Arianic blessing. Yahava will kneel before you presenting gifts, and he will guard you with a hedge of protection. Yahava will illuminate the wholeness of his being toward you bringing order, and he will provide you with love, sustenance, and friendship. Yahweh will lift up the wholeness of his being and look upon you and will set in place all you need to be whole and complete. Amen. Shabbat Shalom.